All right, so we're just going to do a quick review of uh, everything that we've done so far for Chapter 3, which is forces. Okay, so first things first, uh, just going to go over all the three laws that we had that we've talked about. Okay, so Chapter 3, forces. Okay, so in physics we said that forces, this is known as dynamics the study of forces, okay? And we, we took a look at Newton's three laws. So Newton's first law, and the definition of Newton's first law, of course, what was it again? Come on, that's correct. It's an object at rest, stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion at a constant velocity okay all right so um, so right now we know that all the forces that are on this um, on this object are all equal to each other. So what we said was we have an FBD, free body diagram. Or force body diagram. And in this situation, if that object is at rest, then we're saying that you have Fn and Fg. Okay, your velocity is zero. Object at rest. Correct? Okay. And if an object is in motion, then you may have, again, Fn equals to Fg, but you may also have an F applied, which equals to your F friction. Okay, so F net X equals to zero, and F net Y equals to zero, and then the object is in motion, object in constant velocity, V constant. So velocity is constant. This is what we talked about so far for Newton's first law. So the way that we know if an object uh, is not moving, uh, I mean, if it's not accelerating, is when they use, what kind of words do they use to tell us when the object is not accelerating? Uniform motion, that's correct. They said it was uniform motion. And when you see the word uniform motion, right away you know that the object is has a velocity that is constant and a direction that is constant, one direction. So even the velocity is co if the velocity is constant but the direction is changing, that would not be considered as uniform motion. Uniform motion has to be constant direction and constant velocity. So this is a key word that is used in our questions to let you know that when we say the word uniform motion or we say V velocity is constant, then right away you should know that this is Newton's first law. Okay, so this was Newton's first law. Now uh, here we said that the forces were balanced. The forces were balanced. So here in this situation of course your F net Y equals to zero. Forces were balanced. Newton's first law. Okay, then we talked about Newton's second law, and in Newton's second law, okay, okay, now here what we're saying is anytime your forces are unbalanced, when forces are unbalanced, Okay, then you will have a net net force. Net force. And this F net, which we either write it down like this or like this, F net, of course, equals to mass times acceleration. So Newton's second law says that an unbalanced force causes an acceleration in the direction 
of the net force. Okay, and we know that acceleration is, what is it? Proportional to your uh, F net and inversely proportional to your mass. Okay. To the F net and inversely proportional to the mass. Okay, so the larger the mass, the smaller the acceleration. The larger the F net, the larger the acceleration. Okay, so in this situation, of course, I'm still going to have my FPD. Okay, so imagine there is your Fn, there is your Fg, but now your F applied is much larger than your F friction. So this is your F friction. So what you're going to do is F net Y is still equals to zero. So Fn minus Fg equals to zero and therefore your Fn equals to your Fg. Okay, in the x direction on the other hand, it's going to be F net x, which equals to mass times acceleration. Now what are my two forces? That's going to be Fa minus Ff, which equals to mass times acceleration. So this is how you would write it out. This would be your system equation. Okay, Fa of course being your F applied. So this is your applied force. Okay, this is your normal force, F normal, this is your gravity, and of course this is your friction. Okay, now in this situation whenever your forces are unbalanced, whenever. Whenever you have one force that is larger than the other force, it will create an imbalance and therefore you will have a net force in the direction of the F net. Whichever direction that unbalanced force is in. Okay, so the larger the force, that's the direction in which your acceleration will take place. So this was our second law. Okay, Okay, um, the third law, of course, we looked at was um, action reaction. Okay, so for every action, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now remember that the action and the reaction are not on the same object. The action and the reaction are not on the same object. So we took a look at an example we took a look at examples of for example uh, gun recoil. Okay? Um, and we did the example of a paintball gun and the paintball and we, we took up that that question. So what we did was yes Forgive my gun drawing. Okay. All right. So we said the bullet comes out of it, causes the action. So the action is on the bullet and the reaction is on the gun. Two different objects. Okay. So people could say, well, if the action and reaction, if every object has an opposite and equal reaction and it's on the same object, then it should cancel out, right? All the forces should cancel out. You should never have any acceleration. Ever, ever, ever. Because every action has an opposite reaction. And if it's on the same object, they should always cancel out. But they don't. Which means we know that they are not on the same object. They are on two different objects. I bounce the ball on the ground. So one force is the earth and the other force is the ball. Two different objects. The earth, we don't see it moving. If I was to jump on the earth, I don't see the earth moving, but I can see the reaction in the ball or in myself as I jump up. Okay? All right. So this would be your action reaction that we talked about. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at this question. It says, uh, 
1.2 times 10 to the 4 kilogram truck is traveling south at 22 meters per second. So velocity 1 is 22 meters per second. Okay, what net force is required to bring the truck to a stop? So first, what is F net? And the time that is given is 3, or the distance that is given, sorry. The distance is 330 meters. Of course, if we're coming to a stop, my final velocity is 0 meters per second. Okay? And the question is, what causes this net force? Well, what causes the net force? If I'm slowing down, what is causing it? Friction. I'm braking. I'm friction is causing my net force to... Uh, cause my object to slow down. So how am I going to do this? So the first thing i got to figure out is figure out my acceleration. Now what formula should I use? I have Vf, I have D, and I have Vi. Ah, Vf squared, which equals to Vi squared plus 2A delta D. Okay, your Vf squared, of course, is 0. Vi squared is 22 squared plus 2 times A times 330. Okay. What is 22 squared, by the way? Yeah? 400, 484, can you just check it? 484 plus 2 times 330 is 668. Okay, bring this over to the other side. You're probably thinking, wow, my answer is going to be a negative, so I must be doing something wrong. No, you're not. My object is slowing down, so we know acceleration is going to be negative because my object is slowing down. Okay, so negative 484 divided by 660, which equals to A. What is your A? What do you get? Negative 0.73 meters per second squared backward, of course. Okay, so my object is slowing down. I know that. Now I can figure out what my F net is. So F net equals to MA. M, of course, is 1.2 times 10 to the 4 times 0 0.73. And what is your F net? What do you get? I can't hear you. 875? 8, 8, Newtons. Of course, backward. What is this force caused by? Caused by friction. Okay, are we okay with this? Yes. Uh, it's fine because the object did say that it was going, no, it has to be north. You could say negative 8,760 Newton south or positive 8,760 newtons north. So that is one way of looking at it. So 8,760 newtons north or negative 8,760 newtons south. This is your F net. Okay? All right.